Hi, everybody. Welcome to Health Systems in the U.S. My name is Sarah Bonzo, and I'll be your instructor for the course. In this introductory video, I want to give you an overview of what you can expect over the course of the next 15 weeks. Since this is a foundational course in the MBA HSA program, and I know that the vast majority of you are in the program, taking this course either at the beginning of your program or very early on, um, but we do have some individuals from other graduate programs that are taking this course as an elective. Irrespective, the intent of this course is to give you a foundational understanding of the healthcare system as we know it today in the US, how we got here, and what things are going on in the industry um, that might impact where we're headed in the future. The first half of the course is going to be more traditional in nature. Each week, there'll be readings associated with a textbook that correspond to the content you can find in the module within Blackboard. We'll start off looking at the history, so the individuals, the events, um, some of the organizations that have helped to influence healthcare as we know it today, the structure, and this foundational con content, these first three chapters really focus heavily on social justice versus market justice. In a nutshell, that is how we can um, kind of convey some of the complexities with our health system as compared to other countries, is that we've got this pull between these two viewpoints and it's very difficult to find a common or middle ground. We'll talk about some of the financing of our health system, which again, go back to that social justice versus market justice mentality and the combination that we know in our health system today. And we'll also look at the triple aim in the context of kind of this quasi free market healthcare system or industry that we have. The triple aim focuses on cost, access, and quality of healthcare. Recently, the triple aim has been expanded to a, what is often called the quadruple aim, which also takes into account physician satisfaction. Um, on the flip side of that, kind of the negative aspect is burnout. We see that um, when physicians and our caregivers are work too hard, um, are, are, have multiple competing priorities, that it creates a really um, detrimental and very difficult work environment. And when it happens to our caregivers, we know that we are not doing right by the patient, whether it's with respect to cost, access, or quality. Throughout the course, we'll come back to kind of these three pillars, cost, access, and quality, as the focus of when we make strategic decisions, whether it be for an organization, whether it may be just a very localized decision that you're making with, with your team, or whether we're talking about policy at a national level, it all comes back to the triple aim. How can we make changes and use data-driven decision-making to help move us closer toward the triple aim? And we'll always come back and do this in the context of population health. So the first half of the course, we're gonna be talking through all of, all of this context to give you a better understanding for the complexities inherent to our health system and some of the things uh, that we can think about as we look toward the future. The second half of the course is going to focus more heavily on practice. We'll be talking a lot about lean thinking, performance improvement, how we can look at kind of some of the core metrics that um, are driving decision making within the organization. Not only how we measure those pieces, but how we visualize that data as well. And that's all going to be kind of wrapped and encompassed in our conversation about what it means to be a leader. And as we look towards some of the organizations and individuals who we deem to be exceptional leaders in healthcare today. The last couple of modules will focus on measures of use. Um, and these are aspects and metrics that you are going to be faced with on a daily basis as a healthcare or hospital administrator, looking at use of your facility and services and understanding what strategic changes you may need to make for the organization. Um, that are not only going to help the organization be, be financially viable, but most importantly, are going to help support the needs of the population that you serve. So what are you going to be responsible for, for throughout the course? Early on, when we're talking about a lot of the foundational content that corresponds with the text, I've included mastery quizzes. These quizzes have draw from a pool of questions. So you can take this, these quizzes as many times as you'd like. The highest grade will be counted towards your final grade in the course. So if you don't do so hot the first time, no problem. Figure out what you didn't completely understand, which questions you got incorrect, reread that, some of that content and take the, the quiz again. My focus is not for you to get all of this content right on the first try, but it's for you to grow and to learn and develop. 
And a part of that is the mastery quizzes is a way for you to self-reflect on what things come easily, what things you understand, and what things you might need to brush up on a little bit more. Along the lines of kind of understanding where you're at, the mastery quizzes really focus on just some of that basic knowledge and understanding of the concepts, where the discussion posts are really intended for this to be an opportunity for you to think critically about um, aspects, challenges in the current healthcare industry and how we can apply some of the concepts that we've talked about in the module to addressing some of these challenging issues. For these posts, since this is a graduate course, I will be looking for you to reference peer-reviewed articles um, and using APA-style formatting during the discussions. And I'll also be looking for you, most importantly, to not just draw on opinion, but include as many facts and as much research as you can to support your position. This is also an opportunity for you to engage with your colleagues and your peers throughout the course. So at the end of each discussion post, I'd like for you to pose a question to the rest of the class. For you to get full credit for the discussion post, you will also have to respond to at least one of your peers' posts. And I will be grading those responses to your peers using kind of the same, um, the same rubric that I'll use to grade your discussion post. I'll be looking for it to be complete, grammatically correct, um, respectful in tone and nature, um, but most importantly for you to draw on resources um, and to cite those sources in your responses. There'll also be assignments included in the course. So this is kind of uh, on the latter end. You'll see more of these where I'm looking for you to practice with your data analysis and your visualization skills. There will also be two exams, a midterm and a final exam based on the content. Um, as well as a research project. So this final deliverable is your opportunity to dive into the topics that interest you most throughout the course. This is going to be um, not only an opportunity, again, for you to really um, research more on a topic that interests you, but as you look uh, throughout the program, there are going to be more opportunities for you to do research-based projects. And that will culminate in your capstone course in your last semester. So this is an opportunity for you to really kind of get your feet wet and start thinking about, as you think about that, that final culminating experience in your capstone later on throughout the program, you know, that can be a research paper, that can be um, a project, a performance improvement project with your organization. And so as you start to think about where you want to land after graduation, maybe what, what sort of position you want to step into, as many of our students um, do receive promotions while they're still in the program, is you start to think about that next step in your career, um, use this as an opportunity to really focus in on uh, those, those kind of aspects that interest you most and that will help you take that next step in your career. While this course is asynchronous, because for those of you working in healthcare, I know you work crazy hours, um, you have very busy schedules, and many of you have family and other obligations as well, this is asynchronous. But I don't want that to disrupt um, our ability to get to know one another and for you to get the most out of me. So I will be requiring uh, two one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls throughout the course of the semester. One early on for us just to get an opportunity to meet one another, and the second later on to focus more on your research project and where you'd like to focus uh, for, for that deliverable. I will be sending out announcements so that you can plan accordingly for those visits. But in the meantime, if you have any questions as you get started with the content, please don't hesitate to email me. I'm happy to talk via phone or set up a Zoom call at any time. I hope you have fun getting started with this course and I'll talk to you all soon.